Hi, I'm Dave Ingerbretson, and Leroy Hyatt and I would like to welcome you to a very special edition of Fly Tying the Angler's Art. Uh, today is special because of the guest we have. Uh, a while back, a very old friend of mine came through town, uh, Dave Whitlock, and we convinced him to come into the studio and tie some flies for us. And so today we're going to tie one of those flies. You know, Dave Whitlock is probably as well known as any fly fisherman in the world. He's uh, a fly. It was a pleasure for me just to meet him. Oh yeah, it. he's a fly fishing artist, fly tire lecturer, instructor. Mm -hmm. He's probably one of the foremost tires of bass bugs oh, without that a doubt. ever has been, and he's a yeah. real advocate of warm water fly fishing. Mm -hmm. He's done a lot of writing on the subject and uh, a real innovator in terms of fly patterns. And he's going to tie one of those innovative patterns for us today. And uh, I've known Dave for probably 25 years, and it was just so much fun to be with him and for you to meet him, and he's just an all-around good guy. Yeah, he really is. And so let's start out by having Dave Whitlock tie his sheep minnow for us. We've known each other, Dave, for just 25 years or a little longer, and we just don't... Seems like a lot longer than that. Seems like it, but uh, we just don't get to see enough of you, so we're really happy to have you here and to uh, show us some bass flies that uh, you do so well. And uh, Well, it's a good opportunity to have some fun and be with you, Dave, it and, sure is. And, and I guess Leroy, too. Well, Leroy's, <laughs> Leroy's doing all right. He's coming along. All right. you, you, it kind of grows on you. Yeah. And uh, you're going to show us now the uh, a, uh, sheep minnow yep. pattern. This one's going to be to imitate a perch. Yeah, Davey, uh, this is a, a fly design, first of all, that I that came up with to try to really closely imitate different bait fish. And I want to tie for you all this afternoon a, a little, a little uh, yellow perch. But keep in mind when I do it that this can be applied to any minnow design. It doesn't matter whether it's a shiner or a shad or a dace or what have you. In various sizes yeah. as well yeah. as various colors. Yeah, and I use it in fresh and salt water. I was just going to say. And it's a phenomenal yeah. fly. You, it's just, what, just, what materials will we be using? Okay, first of all, that we're going to use a, a nickel-plated uh, 4X long heavy wire hook. Okay, okay. This, this would camera. be about a size 6 maybe? Uh, well, for, for tying his afternoon size 2. Okay. And then, but you can go with small as 8 or 10 all the way up to, to 1 or 2 aught. Uh, the materials I want to put on it are the uh, this the saddle here is a is a grizzly saddle that I've dyed kind of a chartreuse green and that's going to act as the lateral line bars of the sunfish. Then this hair here, which is name which the fly got its name after, uh, sheep hair. This is Icelandic sheep hair. Icelandic sheep. And it's really mm -hmm. special stuff. You see, it's almost like marabou. See how it flows. It's wonderful in the water. We're going to use three colors: orange, olive, and yellow. And then to add a little sparkling flash to that lateral line area, we're going to, we're going to use some saltwater pearl flashaboo and some gold flashaboo. And then over the top, a little bit of kind of a peacock green uh, crystal here. And then for the gill area here, a little bit of, of, of red uh, dubbing. And so you've got and some then, eyes? Yeah, and, and of course, eyes are really important on minnows. So I love these new holographic eyes. They're, they're terrific because they mm -hmm. really sparkle and they're very durable too. Great. Well, and let's then I want to use uh, just some some eight aught white nylon thread uh, okay. to that. Okay. Let's get at it. Ready to go? All right. First thing I want to do is bend the barb down to the hook, and I just put that in the jaws of the vise and 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 bend it. And that takes the barb down. The next thing I want to do is this is a bend back or or up swimming hook. Okay. And so I take and right behind the eye of the uh, shank and bend it down just a little bit, about four, five or ten degrees, about like that. You see. Uh huh. Well, then, that'll make it swim straighter? No, that'll make it swim with the hook up. Oh, down. The other okay. thing I want to do is, is increase the gape for hooking. So, because the, a lot of the materials are going to be tied right over the top of this, even though they're soft materials, they still act as a slight deflector. So I just take the spear or the point of the hook and bend it up about five degrees. Mm -hmm. And that will almost double the hooking ability. Sure. I'll show you what I get. I've just there. started tying some of those bend back hooks. Uh, I got the idea, in fact, from Lefty on his website. Yeah. And uh, I really like the way they act and perform, and of oh, course, they weedless. They're wonderful. Yeah, you oh, can yeah. cast them. They, they, they're hooked, they're fish, they catch fish, but they don't catch weeds. Right. Anyway, I'm going to just rough in the area. The whole fly is going to be tied on the front quarter part of this shank. Hmm. I like to use the nickel plated because it's relatively uh, corrosion proof in salt and brackish water, but also it acts as mirror camouflage. And I really when believe you, in when that. you did that bend back, it's about a quarter of the length of the hook, Shank? Uh, I'd or say about a quarter, yeah, uh -huh. just about a quarter. And then I'm going to just coat that over. You can either use five minute epoxy or this uh, super glue we call Zappagap. And so I just take the thread now at the eye and just wrap over just to get a good foundation to tie on. 
over that roughened area. As soon as I get that done, the next thing I want to do is add a little tuft of this really neat sparkle dubbing here uh, that will simulate the gill filaments or maybe a little bit of bleeding at the head. And just make a little tuft of that right in front of that bend. Nice little round tuft like that. Hmm. Now all the rest of the flies tied it forward to that. Okay. And isn't that unusual because most people use the tie yeah, a lot that's right. on that. So you the first sure didn't leave much room in the front though. Well that's <laughs> why we're using the eight out thread. Oh, See, it okay. makes me look good. Then I take <laughs> I take a section of this yellow hair here and I just lay it and I want it to come back about maybe uh, two thirds of the length of the shank and I cut it right there. And now here's a little trick I use to make that really uh, come in there needed. Go right behind the eye of the hook, catch it with a couple wraps like that and then just pull it down tight mm -hmm. right behind the eye. Then I'll take the zappa gap and wet the thread a little bit with, so that this will really bond that hair. Because I gotta really make a strong foundation right there. Uh, the next thing I do is to take a little bit of the orange. Now that's one thing we've gotta say. We like to expose people to new materials and new techniques. And oh I'm boy, sure- this is new, I'll tell I'm you. sure the Icelandic uh, sheep isn't common around the country, unless people have been exposed to these types yeah. of flies. But uh, it would certainly pay people that are interested in tying these. Yeah. Not to, don't look for a substitute, yeah. but find the right stuff. You can use marabou and you can use uh, uh, some of the other synthetic hairs, but for the real thing, you, you want to look for a product called streamer hair, and it's in almost all fly shops. Streamer hair? Yeah, and it comes in about 20 colors. Yeah. Now you can see how the profile here, I'm building a, a, a sunfish or, or, mm -hmm. or, or a perch uh, profile with that hair. See? Uh -huh. The next thing is that I want to add a few little strands of gold flashaboo, about eight or ten strands, r again right at the nose here, because I'll call this the nose, not the head, because the head's going to be back, and leave those just a tiny bit longer than the, uh, than the, uh, uh, the, the mm -hmm. middle part of the body. Mm -hmm. little, little. Then I'll take some olive and lay right on top of that. This is going to be kind of the top of the sunfish. No. And I try to keep this fairly sparse, Davey. I don't want it to get it real heavy because mm -hmm. it, it casts heavy and, it, and uh, it doesn't move nicely through the water if I get this thing too materialed up. Now, it, we've called this both a sunfish and a perch. It's basically you can either, either you can one. either one, yeah, but it's basically, down in our color country, everything's a perch, but, okay. but this is a yellow perch imitation. Okay. Uh, next thing I want to do is take a couple of these strands of uh, a saltwater flash boot and lay right on the lateral line of this minnow. And then I just trim this at an angle like that and bend it back. And this adds a nice little amount of flash to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, see at the camera there, see how that flash is? Oh, yeah. You can see it on the other side in a minute when I get over there. As, as soft as this material is, it must turn into absolutely nothing oh, in the man. water. It, it's just, a, it, 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 it does two green. things. It does two things. You're right, Leroy. It, it moves to the water like marabou, mm -hmm. and yet it has a wonderful transparency, and it's a lot, lot more durable than marabou because it is a hair. And you can still see the gill plates in there. Yeah, yeah. Now, the next thing is that I want to add a little barred feather to the side, you know, because the yellow perch oh, sure. mm -hmm. will have a bar on it. So I just lay that right again, right on the side. I don't strip the quill, and, uh, and lay one on the other side. Well, now, didn't I see it's this pattern in your book tie. on natural, uh, I forget the title of the book. Where uh, you've, Crop Food Guide, Dave Quick Life. Where you've designed uh, specific patterns for specific uh, yeah. no, life forms. No, no, this is this that was that, that was uh, that book was written just bef before I came out with this particular okay. fly. Anyway, so I put that on there to simulate the little barring effect of the minnow. Hmm. Then we put on the head, which are merely just a couple of small round uh, feathers. This happens to be off the back of a uh, cock pheasant. Sometimes people call this the cheek. Of the uh -huh. feather, but uh -huh. but you just want to put one on each side. No, we didn't have that in our materials list. So tell us again that that's just a uh, uh, little body feather from just a pheasant. A, it's just a body. It's, it's off the back of a pheasant, mm -hmm. and I, I use different kinds of feathers according to what kind of a head I'm trying to imitate. Okay. If I was using a shad, I might use like a silver gray mm -hmm. feather. So anyway, there's the uh, the head on it. The next thing I want to do is uh, is add just a <laughs> tiny bit of this and we'll be through with the tying part of it and then we'll put on a little bit of window dressing called eyes and we'll be through with the fly. It's really Well, I can't wait to try that in my smallmouth pond. Well, I'll tell you, uh, you have to find any place, just a little, if you, just a little bit over the top like that, just to add a little bit of sparkle to it. Now, the next thing I want to do is just finish this head off and uh, 
I do one of my favorite quick finishes, which is just simply taking the super glue. Make sure it's waterproof super glue too. This doesn't work with, with just any super glue. And I just wet about two or three inches of the thread. I start at the eye and work back. Well, that's a neat trick. Uh, and all I've seen, seen that before. that before. Now oh. you can go ahead yeah. after you finish and coat it over with, if you want a shiny hard head with some type of a hard, you know, like five minute yeah. epoxy or, okay. or head cement. But I don't do that. I don't need to do that for yeah. epoxy. Now the next thing you do is to take a little bit of the flex cement and put a little drop right on to reinforce the feather on that side. Now and for those viewers, this is the same stuff that Leroy has used all the time. He talks about this rubber-based cement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's basically uh, the tennis shoe repair stuff thinned with toluol or some of the other uh, commercially mm -hmm. type, the toluene, the, uh, some of the other commercial products like that that are available. I got a little bit too much on there, so I just took, take this feather and kind of dampen the eye out that way. Now the next thing I do is take some of the uh, rubber cement, and I'm going to put just a little dab right on the eye. Now the eyes, these, these holographic eyes come with, with a sticky material, uh, Leroy, but the thing is that they, it didn't, it's not that sticky. So by adding a little bit of this... Just making it more durable. Then, it's a lot, lot more durable, yeah, that eye won't come off. Some people mm -hmm. say, well, how long will that eye stay on there? I usually say, well, after the fly's gone, the hook's still there. I mean, the eye's still <laughs> the there. Eye's still <laughs> there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, uh, but boy, that dresses that little fly. Oh, nice. yeah. Put that on there. Let me get to the other side, the, the audience's side. I think you'll understand what I'm talking about. Well, that oh, really isn't that, does shine You can just see there. what that thing's going to do when it's wet. Uh, it has an unbelievable action of water. It casts nice. It doesn't carry yeah. a lot of water oh, with yeah, it. Sure. And it's, it, it's almost 100% snake proof. Now, yeah. here's what I wanted to show you. Take and run your finger just down the, si the top of that, f that real carefully. Just go ahead and run it on down there. See how that catches? Oh, yeah. Because that little point angled right up that there way. Is, sure. Where it's a bend back with bucktail or something yeah. over the top that hadn't been bent up, it acts almost like a snag guard. Yeah. Uh -huh. But that won't. And the, how it acts as a snag guard is because the hook keels mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that little yellow perch, I guarantee you, any, any self-respecting smallmouth or largemouth or walleye or anything else that eats yellow perch like pickerel or northern pike mm -hmm. would eat that. Plus, there's a lot of places like out in Montana and some of those lakes where they have unwanted yellow perch and the brown trout really feed big oh, Or you can tie yeah. it in trout type colors oh, yeah. uh, and fish it as a trout imitation too yeah. because they're cannibalistic. A big yeah. brown will gobble yeah. up its own young. That's right. You can try it in any, you know, I read Ridney that to imitate the threadfin shad uh -huh. to catch big stripers and trout with in Arkansas, but uh, I found it works everywhere. Great fly. Yeah. Good looking for Great fly. I like Thank that better than Marabou, even. Oh, yeah. yeah. It yeah. really is nice. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. All right, the pattern for the Whitlock sheet minnow was the hook we used, the streamer hook. You can tie it any size from size uh, 2 to 6, 4X long. He used a stainless steel hook, uh, yellow thread, used pink dubbing for the gills. The body and the head was orange, olive, and yellow uh, Icelandic sheep hair or streamer hair. The lateral line was chartreuse dyed grizzly saddle hackle uh, with a little silver flashaboo over that. The uh, back was peacock green flashaboo. The cheeks were uh, ringneck pheasant body feathers uh, with the holographic eyes. All right, next we're going to uh, tie for you a steelhead fly, a very simple but effective pattern. This is called the burlap pattern mm -hmm. uh, for good reason. Why don't you tell us why? <laughs> <laughs> a very good reason. The tail will use a dark deer hair. The, uh, the hackle material will be a, a soft hackle. This is a, a grizzly hen hackle. You could also use just any grizzly soft hackle. And then the way the fly gets its name, this is just a string out of a burlap sack. The thread we'll use is a six-aught uh, tying thread. I'll put a, a size four in the vise. I've already pinched the barb on it. You can tie these a lot of different sizes. I, I've seen them tied all the way up to a one-aught, which is an extremely large for a steelhead fly, but sometimes when the, the water's real cold, you need that large fly to get down a little deeper. I've dressed out whole hook shank. I'll take a small clump of this dark deer here Get that under fur out. 
so many times I've seen people try to stack deer here with the under fur in it. Mm -hmm. It won't do it, or not well. Well, the beauty of this fly, I think, is a lot of very effective flies. Uh, it's simple to tie. Very simple to flat tie. Now I'm going to keep this tail on the short side. Got one broken one there. I'll just lay it in, soft loop, pinch, pull down. Once more, pull down. Keeps everything right on top. Now I'm going to go forward with this just to get all those bound down. What that's going to do is give me a smoother body to lay that burlap on. And then I'll go back harder to get it all bound in place. Then just a string out of an old burlap sack. That's this that's is all nice it stuff is. stuff because it's of course very durable, but oh, very. Uh, it's got a rough appearance to it, and you're going to get a shaggy body. And it shows a uh, a distinct rib to it too. Yeah. It, yeah. It's just really a neat pattern. You can also take this. I've seen this especially in trout flies, when the fly's already tied. Take a razor blade and just lightly score each side. Uh, Those I, little I've fibers done it with a just. Blade. Oh, okay. Yeah. It just stands right up in the air. Oh yeah, just score it with a hacksaw blade. But you can see each wrap of that string as it goes on. Plus when this gets wet, it will turn darker. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the trout fly, you know, there is a burlap nymph that's almost yes, exactly the same. It sure is. Tie yeah. it on a trout size hook and call it a burlap nymph and you've got another fly. The hardest part of this fly is getting the string out of the burlap. <laughs> and tie it down. Then we'll take one of these soft hackles. And this is a little bit of a larger fly. I'll try to find one with a little bit wider fibers on it. You know, we've said it before, but I'm a real fan of those soft hackles. Oh, I love it. Uh, the capes I love it. or the saddles because they're, they're inexpensive and for wet flies, mm -hmm. uh, you can't beat the action. No, that fly just works like crazy. And we'll take a few wraps of this. And again, you don't want too many. No, absolutely not. And I stroke them back as I go through. What are you making, about three turns there? I made about two and a half, two and a half yeah. yeah. Then I'll clip this off. And then as I, as I wrap backward on that just to m build a little head, I'm going to go back on top of that just slightly, which will help lay it down uh -huh. just a little. And you've left enough room there at the eye for a ripple hitch mm -hmm. if you want to. Go ahead and put a, a whip finish on it. I just love a soft tackle fly. Oh, yeah. They just really work so well. Get a drop of cement on it. Now, again, if I were going to fish this fly for myself, I, it's definitely not necessary, but I just like the way it looks. I would let this coating of head cement dry, and then I'd put one more on it. Sure. I like a nice glossy head on a steelhead fly. Just especially. make it look like a little marble, you know. But you can see where it gets its name now, the burlap fly. It's uh, that segmented body looks real well. Deer hair tail, burlap string for the body, and a soft grizzly hackle for the hackle. Well, Leroy, that was a very simple but effective steelhead pattern. Sure. Now we've got another very simple but effective trout pattern very popular in either the lakes or the stream. I especially like it in lakes, and it's the Kerry Special. Mm -hmm. Developed in Washington. Developed here in Washington, and there's a thousand variations oh, in terms sure of the is. body color. And this will be a variation. Yeah. We'll use a tail of the greenish-brown section of a rump, pheasant rump, and the body will be brown chenille. The hackle will be the same greenish pheasant rump. Basically, the variations are in the body color. Oh, yes. They'll use peacock curl. But they're all use. tied with the same rump feathers. Absolutely. Now, I've put a size 10, or a size 8, I mean, hook in the shank. I've already dressed the thread, thread on it. I want to take just a very few fibers off of this pheasant and tie it down. Do you want those sort of medium length that you don't want uh, real long? No, I don't want as long as that long shank hook that I have no. in there. No, not at all. Then I'll take a piece of the chenille, strip some of that off, and with chenille you can do it two ways. You can tie it in like this, wrap the whole thing to save the lump, or you can just pull a little bit of that chenille off the string 
and tie I, it you in. You know, on an earlier saying. show, we tied my favorite of all time lake patterns, the green weenie, the western green weenie, which is, which is, is just the carry special using a, a green you fur dubbing, a originally seal fur dubbing, uh, for the body. Mm -hmm. But it's the same pattern. Now, I like this fly. I use this fly mostly in uh, uh, peacock body. Uh -huh. But this brown chenille is also a very effective. Yeah. Well, I've the also point seen is tied any color you want. Oh, and and they've they've changed this pattern around so often just to fit material they have or water or whatever. I've also seen it tied with olive chenille. Yeah, I think the Same secret thing. is these long green rump feathers. Any soft hackle yeah. is just works very well. Now I'm going to tie the hackle in by the tip. Strip this off just a little bit. Clip that off. I don't know why, but I always tie it in by the butts. Oh, do you? Yeah. Well, to me, if I tie it in by the tip this way, it lets the feathers flow back. It does, does lay back nicely, a little bit. Yeah. And again, what, whatever your personal preference is. Now, I did leave part of this stem on here to kind of use as a little handle. Sure. Then as you go around, you just keep it going that same direction, stroke it back. Now, the funny thing is, I always thought of, well, in my case, the green weenie, I always thought of the carry special as a, uh, as a lake fly. Oh. Never used it in a stream at all oh. until one day we were up, uh, my son Jeff and I were up on the St. Joe River and he was standing up on kind of a precarious position out in the river up on a rock and just picking up to cast and I saw him hit a good fish and he struck so hard and the fish pulled back so hard he went right in the river <laughs> and uh, fought the fish, uh, kind of a scene from a river runs through it and uh, ended up with a very, very nice uh, cutthroat out of the Joe. Uh, maybe a 16 incher, and I said, "What are you using?" And he said, "A carry special." Yep, there you and, are. And uh, it surprised me. There you are. Again, just a very simple, soft hackle. Uh, that fibers off that hackle just work and kick and go on. Dragonflies, yep. damselflies. With a real plump body, I think they probably do take it yes. for a dragonfly meal. And also weight the fly. Uh, yep. Most of them, I think, probably are weighted, but it's just, again, whatever you're... But I think since it can be so effective in so many different body colors, it seems to me that the real secret of its success is in those long green pheasant rump fe tail feathers. I agree. Uh, uh, rump feathers that uh, move so. Well, like with your, your green weenie, the tail on this fly may be totally unnecessary. Well, I, yeah, I don't use the tail on the green yeah. weenie, yeah. But there's a, a variation of a carry special. This happens to be a brown one. Again, the colors could go whichever way you wanted. Uh, green rump, uh, pheasant tail for the tail and hackle, brown chenille for the body. Well, I really enjoyed this show. I enjoyed what Whitlock did. Oh, and and uh, you know, with that sheet minnow, there were so many innovative things. Mm -hmm. uh, one was the bend back style of tying. Yes. Now, I, as I told Dave on the show, I had recently learned that uh, from Lefty, and uh, I've tied a few of those flies, and I really like the bend back style of tying. Mm -hmm. We learned about the, the uh, Icelandic sheep hair. Which I'd never seen I before. had not seen it no, before, and since then I have bought some, mm -hmm. and I am really excited about tying it. Now, I had a friend in Texas sent me a couple of bass flies that were tied with that and I didn't know what it was. Oh. And unfortunately I lost them in the weeds. Oh no. And uh, so now I know what it is and now I can't wait to tie with those. Sure. Uh, in addition to that we tied a very simple and effective burlap steelhead fly and then what was almost a variation of that, the carry special, a good lake fly mm -hmm. and stream fly. So I think we've covered a lot of ground tonight, given people a lot to think about, a lot of, uh, a lot of special variables. things to try and a great time with Dave Whitlock. So you tune in again next week. Thanks for watching, and I think we'll have some excitement for you next week, too. Good night. Dave and Leroy have produced two 90-minute videos covering new and exciting tips on how to make your fly tying better and more effective. They introduce you to everything you need as a beginner and demonstrate helpful techniques for intermediate tires. Fly Tying Techniques Volumes 1 and 2 are available by calling 1-800-883-0124. Cost of each video is $28.95 plus shipping and handling, or get the two-volume set for just $52.95. You can also order the programs in this series. Each 90-minute videotape includes three programs for just $22.95 plus shipping and handling. To order Fly Tying, the Angler's Art Videos and Techniques tapes, call 1-800-883-0124.